Hello everyone. It's been a while. I am aware that it has been quite a long time since I have uploaded anything or live streamed anything on YouTube. Okay, I'm aware. I am currently in the middle of one of the hardest semesters I've had, uh, so that's one of the reasons. So just cut me some slack. I'm now just doing this as a hobby. I'm not doing it to make any money or anything. So uploads or whenever I decide to upload. But whatever. Today we're here to talk about Cold War Zombies. And the reason we're here to talk about Cold War Zombies is because if you haven't noticed, it's a little bit dead. There really has not been much going on in the community. Like barely anyone's playing Cold War Zombies like on stream or like recording anymore just because there's nothing anymore There's nothing new to do. Not, there's like literally nothing new to do. Outbreak's gone uh, gone and has been gone. I don't know what I'm saying. Outbreak's been done. It's sort of done. Uh, Firebase E kind of done. Uh, D Machine A obviously done. It's the first map. It was released ages ago. It's done. No one's really playing D Machine A anymore. But <clears throat> I'm here to talk about Cold War Zombies, and the reason being, there are serious problems with this game mode that we need to take into account right now. So that's what this video is going to be. We're going to get just straight into it. So before I go over what I don't like about Cold War Zombies, I just want to explain what I do like, and I also want to make a confession, somewhat of a confession. Uh, and that is, I do not think this game's bad. I do not think whatsoever the Cold War Zombies is bad by any means. In fact, I think it's actually pretty good. The only issues with it, which I will get into later, it's just that mostly it's just boring and there's not much to do. Again, I'll get back in, I'll get into that later. But before I go over what I don't like, let me just go over what I do like about Cold War Zombies. Uh, I, there are three things I have written down here that I do in fact like. There's probably a few more I can't think of, but there are three things specifically here that I just completely like. One thing I like about it are the Wonder Weapons. I'm a big fan of the Wonder Weapons. I know there's only three in the game right now, that being the DIE machine, the uh, Ray Gun, and the Ray K. But I am a fan of them, and I think they are pretty cool Wonder Weapons. I don't think I've, any of them are bad. Uh, especially the ray gun and the ray k those are godlike uh the dia machine kind of not the best but you no know, it's cool it's an interesting take on a wonder weapon i think they're i think the wonder weapons are actually uh, pretty fun and cool um another thing i like is, are the is the x fills this is something that a lot of people like and it's not really any shock that ever that no one really dislikes it because it takes away from the fact that you have to kill yourself in order to end the game it adds new take on ending the game and it gives you bonus rewards for even doing it so it's a good way to just end your game early if you don't want it's a good way to end your game early if you don't want to just continue on and like you're at a high round like let's say you're at like round 50 you're just bored you don't want to continue you just exfil and just like that you don't have to just keep going until you die or do like a last stand it's really cool and the last thing i like about this is that i think they are innovating in a really interesting way uh, you obviously you have the ether story completely complete now we're heading into the dark ether story And I think the story is a little uh, weird right now. Obviously, there's only been two maps to tell the story um, but I, I think it's a little weird um, and not really anyone knows what's going on But even from that, I mean obviously you go from ether to dark ether something needs to change because obviously you're in a completely different universe so I think the innovation that they're doing is interesting. Uh, it's not just like a copy and paste of like a classic zombies, which personally I would have been f a fan of. I would have been completely fine with that. But I like how they're going in a completely different direction. And I think it's a good way to like get people invested uh, into the game. Obviously, there have been some downfalls uh, with it. Uh, a lot of people aren't really invested into the game. And now that comes down to the complaints. So I have minor complaints and I have many major complaints, okay? So the minor complaint I have, a lot of people are not going to understand this one, but I really don't like the fact that there is no perk limit. Now, before in, in Zombies, uh, every, every freaking Zombies from World at War to Black Ops 4, you had a perk limit of four. You could only buy four perks. As soon as you hit those four perks, the only way you could get more perks was from the perk bottle, uh, was from free perk Easter eggs, essentially. 
um, that's that's the only way you could get additional perks was from uh, free perk Easter eggs. So it was sort of, it, and the reason a lot of people didn't like this is that they limited, they just, literally they just limited the amount of perks that you that you got, and just they didn't like that. They wanted to make sure you, they wanted to get all the perks on the map to just better their arsenal. It's not PvP, it's PvE, so they think they should be able to do that. Personally, I like the perk limit because it made it it made it more of a challenge. It didn't make it so that uh, it didn't make it so that it made it so that you had a chance to actually die. And uh, with there being seven perks in Cold War, I think um, obviously there'd be a lot of different uh, loadouts that people would run with perks. And yes, there's the issue with the like the crutch perk system that they constantly have been wanting to get rid of. Everyone would be running Jug, everyone would be running Stamina Up. I get that. But I think that's sort of fine because that's just what Zombies is. Zombies is known for Juggernaug. Zombies is known for Quick Revive. Zomb Zombies is known for Speed Cola. I would say the same for Double Tap, but it's not in the game. So we can't really use that. Um, and I really like the fact that you only got four perks because it made you question which ones you wanted to buy when you got into it. And uh, obviously for certain different situations, you would run certain different perks. So I think it was cool and I'm not, this is a minor complaint because I'm perfectly fine with the no perk limit. I just think zombies is better with a perk limit. Um, even if it's a perk limit of like five or six, I think there should be a perk limit. I don't think there should be zero perk limit whatsoever. And again, as I said, a lot of you are gonna disagree with me on that, which I totally get. A lot of people don't like the, no, the, the perk limit. So they're happy that they took it out. I'm a little indifferent about it. I would have preferred if they kept it in, but I completely understand why they took it out. And that's my only minor complaint. I now have three major complaints. So while we're on the subject of perks, I just want to explain one of my major complaints. My number one, not number one major complaint, but one of my major complaints is that they have ruined Quick Revive. For anyone who does not know, uh, Quick Revive all the way from War Out War to Black Ops 3. Its effect in solo games is that you would buy it for 500 points. Once you buy it for 500 points, you would you would it would give you a free self revive. So as soon as you go down, it revives you right back up. You lose all your perks and all that, and then you have to you're and then you're vulnerable until you get them all back. Uh, you only had a limited use of three of those. And as soon as you ran out of all threes, the perk machine, the, the quick revive perk machine just completely disappeared and you were stuck without it. You had to use another perk for your fourth slot. In Cold War, and this is also the case in Black Ops 4, but since I'm talking about Cold War, in Cold War, how it works is whether you're on solo or multiplayer or co-op, uh, what it does, it revives teammates faster. Uh, you, get in a, you get your delay to start health regeneration uh, is decreased so you, you don't have to wait as long to have your health start regening and also you bleed out No, that's not what it was. It's that you regain health faster um, So like before like if you're at like one health it would take you about like I would say Three or four seconds to regen all the way back to 250 health without quick revive with quick revive It's now two or three seconds or like one or two seconds to heal all the way back up So I think that's cool but, I mean, the OG Quick Revive is no longer a thing. Technically, it is with the introduction of Self Revives, but it just doesn't, to me, make any sense. This was another issue with Black Ops 4 that made its way into Cold War. It's the Self Revive system. I'm not a fan of it whatsoever. In Black Ops 4, I think it's a little bit different because you did have limited Self Revives, but in Cold War, you have unlimited Self Revives. You literally can never run out of self revives. If you have enough salvage, you can just buy a self revive every single time you go down and your game will never end. And that brings me to my third, not my second uh, major complaint, is that the game is just way too easy and boring. So as I said, infinite self revives, the game will just never end. You have insanely easy early rounds. Now, one of the issues that played back Black Ops 4 was the fact that you spawned in with a lot of the stuff that made you uh, that made you vulnerable. Uh, you, you spawned in with a lot of stuff where like in Black Ops 3, you would have to go on a quest in order to get that stuff. 
uh, and in Black Ops 4, you were just essentially invulnerable in the early rounds. That's what this feels like. Uh, one of the issues with Black Ops 4 is that you essentially spawned in with Juggernaut. You spawned in with 200 health, and that was that. In here, you only spawn in with 150 which is the same as like previous installment of zombies. You only spawn in with 150 health. The difference between those zombies and these and this zombies game is that zombies on like round one only deal 30 damage per hit. So it's a five hit system without jug on round one. It takes the zombies five hits to down you, so it just feels like you have Jug, even though you don't have it. And to tack that, tack on to that, you can just buy Jug later on. And obviously, yes, zombies will start dealing more damage. Like after round 30, I think, 30 or 40, uh, the zombies will start dealing 75 damage per hit without armor. So then you are in fact vulnerable. And that's where I think this becomes not a not an issue. But it's the fact that early on, you are pretty much invulnerable because the zombies have to take five hits to down you. Not only that, they attack slow. They attack very, very slow. There have been times where I'm playing co-op, I pick the wrong class, and then I want to die so I can get the right class. It takes the zombies a good, like, six, seven seconds when, there's, when I'm essentially surrounded to down me on round one. That does not make any sense. Let's look back to the very first three Call of Duty Zombies games. Call of Duty World at War, Call of Duty Black Ops 1, and Call of Duty Black Ops 2. They had a two hit down system when you did not have Jug. Therefore, if you were hit twice, you would just go down. And you are a whole, whole lot more vulnerable than you were now. Because there, there were zombies called, zombies would do a thing called a windmill, where they would just flail their arms around, and they would hit you insanely fast. You could very easily die on round three if you weren't caref careful. And people would call you a noob for it, and it would just not be a fun time. Now, if you, if, if you die in round three, it's essentially, it, it, like, it's pretty much on, perf on, on purpose. It has to be on purpose, or else... Like, I don't even know what, if you die in round three in Cold War Zombies and it's, and it's by accident, uh, you might just have to uninstall the game because that just should not happen. If you die on round three, it has to be on purpose. And I can completely understand if it's on purpose because of the creative class system, which is another issue I have with the game and all. But, um, I'll get into that actually right now because I feel like I got my point across about the insanely easy early rounds. But... The creative class system. Oh my goodness. I was not looking forward to this when the game was first announced. When it came out, I actually sort of liked it. Now I'm deviating to the point where I do not like it. And I think there's actually just one... Th there are multiple issues, but I think there's one thing that they could do that would fix this whole thing. But let me just explain what the creative class system is. So creative class, you spawn in with a gun of your choice. Whether that be a pistol, a shotgun, an assault rifle, an LMG, whatever you want, you can spawn in with that gun. Well, how that's different to previous installments is that you would spawn in with a pre-designated pistol that Treyarch would uh, you take out for you. Usually that's 1911. Um, and everyone loved that. Everyone loved the 1911. It got a lot of praise. Mustang and Sally was unreal. Um, and that was, it was just so much fun to do, uh, the starting pistol. And a lot of people do like the starting pistol challenge. That's not a thing you can do anymore because they got rid of the starting pistol. Yes, it's sort of still there because you spawn in with the worst variant of your gun. They have obviously the tier, the weapon tier system and the pack and then sort of new pack-a-punch system. You spawn in with the tier one non-pack-a-punch weapon. And that does not seem like that big an issue to me. But the main issue is that a lot of people just upgrade their gun to the point where it will deal that much. It will just deal more, more and more in damage until the point where it's just as good as any box weapon. I have taken my starting weapon to round 30 numerous amount of times. And it is, it's nothing I'm just like, okay, wow, that was hard. No, it's just insanely easy to do that because you can upgrade it so easily. And the, the issue with it, and the thing I think they need to do to fix it, is that they just gotta make sure you cannot upgrade your starting weapon. Sure, yes, this will make camo grinding much, much harder. And I completely understand that's incent uh, that, I completely understand that. 
that makes complete sense. And for the camo grinding system, I hope they never change this whatsoever, or else camo grinding is going to become insanely hard. But from a gameplay standpoint, if the fact that you're able to take your starting weapon to a high round with ease, that should not be a thing that can happen unless you're playing Black Ops 1 Zombies with the Mustang and Sally and PhD Flopper. You should not be able to do it with ease. You should not be able to only use that. Like, usually what I do with Zombies, I take my starting weapon up until the point where I just get a Wonder Weapon, and then the Wonder Weapon maybe turns into the gun that I use. But uh, other than that, I usually never hit the box. I never buy a wall weapon. I just try to go grab that Wonder Weapon, and then that's just my game. I don't even need to hit the box. I, I Obviously, you're seeing gameplay right now. You are seeing gameplay right now. It's a little bit different on D-Machine Night because the ray gun's only in the box. Yes, you can get it from the Coffin Dance Easter Egg, but that's a very slim chance. Um, but and on Firebase Z, literally what I did to get this gameplay, I went from... I went uh, all the way... What was it? Uh, I went all the way from round 1 to 31, never hitting the box, never buying, uh, never buying a wall weapon. I never did any of those. The only reason why I would buy a wall weapon or hit the box is to get a single shot weapon that will let me do the dartboard easter egg. The dartboard step in the free ray K easter egg. That's the only reason why I would hit the box or buy a wall weapon was to get a single shot weapon. Unlike a shotgun like I was using. That's my main issue with uh with cold war zombies is that it's insanely easy it's just crazy boring and my third major complaint you have absolutely nothing to do after turning on power it might seem like you do okay it might seem like you do but let me just explain to you pretty much everything that you do after turning on power okay so you get your power on everything's cool maybe you go pack a punch maybe you buy a perk and all of that okay on z machine you do the coffin and easter egg you get your free DIE machine, and then training starts. You're done. That, that, that's that. That yeah, That's completely that. That took you, like, what, two rounds? Two rounds to do that? Uh, yeah. Yeah, you're done. You got that, uh, and there you go. Uh, you're now just training until you get to a point where you want to exfil. Okay, that's that. On Firebase Z, uh, you turn on power. You go back. You do the uh, you do the, this creepy forest Easter egg. Okay. Okay, I've done that. I have. I, I get all that. Um, now let me go grab the, the blueprint for the Ray K. Okay, I got the Ray K. I got the guy's eye. Um, okay, I've got all the parts. I just need the main guard to spawn in so I can get uh, get the last part. Okay, I'm on round eight. He doesn't spawn in until round fifteen, or in my case, eighteen. Uh, so I'm just gonna be here for a while with no with no Ray K, and uh, that's literally what I did. I just spent ten rounds training zombies and killing them until a main guard spawned in so that I could get the free Ray K. That's literally all I was doing ever since after I turned on power. I was I just got the blueprint. I started getting all the parts. It was round eight. I had all but one part. The only other part I needed to get was from the main guard. And he did not spawn in for me until round 18. I spent 10 rounds literally just training zombies and shooting them in the face with uh, with a shotgun. That's what I did. And that's just what I did to get these, this gameplay. That, that's all that that's all that is to this game uh, like let me let me explain to you uh the other like other maps as an example okay um uh, mob of the dead uh mob is a little bit different because you like you have afterlife so it's um it's uh separate power stations but even with that you have to go all the way around the, uh the map you get the shield parts cool uh is there a shield on the map i've completely forgot there is a shield yes <laughs> okay um, you get the acid gat parts so you can get your blunder gat to become an acid gat. You have to get all the plane parts in order for you to get the pack a punch. Uh, you hit the box a few times. Uh, oh, you have to feed the dog heads in order to get the hell's, hell's retriever, right? Uh, you, you can use the hell's retriever then to get the free blunder gat, or you can hit the box to get the to get the blunder gat. Um, then you can obviously get all the acid gat parts. You can get the acid gat. Um, you still gotta get all the shield parts. There you go. You got the shield. You got all the plane parts. Okay, build the plane. Go to go to pack a punch. There you go. Got the pack a punch. Pack a punch. Both my guns. The electric chair back to spawn, and then just rinse and repeat. With Cold War, there is no rinse and repeat. There's rinse, and then you'd never repeat. You'd literally never repeat. Um, and obviously, that is one thing that Mob of the Dead did right, and that's one of the reasons Mob of the Dead is one of the best maps of all time. Is that there's always something to do. Uh, obviously, a lot of maps have not followed that. Um, for example, uh, like Keynote the Totem. Um, I'll, I'll, this is a, probably a better example. So Keynote the Totem, 
what, what you would do on key now is you would probably turn on power get a get the thunder gun from the box uh get a wall weapon or a good gun from the box pack a punch them and start training and that's and you might ask how is that any different to what we're doing now in these games here's the here's the answer to that question in those games Keener the Toten was the fifth map ever made expectations for maps were still insanely low in fact expectations really only started to ramp up once we hit origins when we had all this all this crazy stuff that was happening and there was a ton to do but back when like kino was the very was like um was a, was like in its prime that's what was expected of maps you were not expected to have to go on a crazy hunt to do anything now with maps evolving and all of that we are now expecting maps to have a ton especially now that the engines are getting better and better and better we are expecting a ton of stuff to be in each map and there's just nothing to do in these maps that's a massive issue i don't know why treyarch has decided to do this obviously uh they have actually stated why they're doing this they're trying to essentially rope in a new fan base if i'm uh, a new player base not a fan base a new player base if that's what i'm if that's what i'm getting at they're trying to essentially get uh noobs to get into zombies they want a little bit of easier maps and then maybe down the road we'll get a few hard maps and if that's the case this this video might not age well at all but if that's, if that's not the case and we just constantly get the same easy maps and nothing to do maps that we've been getting then i don't i don't think cold war is gonna be six i don't think cold war zombies is gonna be successful i really do not think cold war zombies is gonna be successful especially considering the fact that they said only six maps this might not be true but from what i've heard only six maps are gonna be in the dlc rotation uh those are now di d dia uh d machine a uh, Firebase C, and I don't know if they're counting Outbreak, but uh, considering the fact that just released in Season 2, and there's probably going to be like five seasons, I'd imagine it's not, unless now we get a map per season, uh, in which case, maybe. But in terms of uh, expectations, the expectations are so much higher, we're expecting to get a ton of stuff to do, like, and back to Kino, Obviously, Kino, the expectations were insanely low, and therefore, we're not expecting that much to do. But now that we're expecting more, they need to try to produce us more, and that's just something they're failing at doing. So, uh, th those are my main real, those are really all my main issues with Cold War Zombies. Um, uh, let me know what you think down in the comments. Uh, let me know if you're still playing Cold War Zombies. I am, but not really that much. Um, I'm mostly playing BO3, BO2 on PC now. Uh, I'm having a lot more fun on those than I am on Cold War. Let me just tell you that. Uh, but hopefully you guys uh, enjoyed the video. And um, again, let me know what you think down below. And I'll see you guys all later. Goodbye.